Hey everyone, and welcome back to another devlog for Spellbent. If this is your first time here, be sure to like and subscribe if you like what you see, and comment down below to let me know what you think about the game. Last week, I did a big overview of my goals for the game and my progress so far, so if you haven't seen that one, click on the card in the top right, go check it out, and then come back and watch this one. Okay, so today's devlog is going to be a little different than the past ones. This past week, I had my sister come visit from out of town to meet my new baby, and then once she left, it was Halloween weekend. And so amidst all the Halloween parties, hanging out with my sister, taking care of the baby, etc., I was only able to get about a half hour in at a time and was never in a good spot to record anything. So let's just jump right in. At the end of the last devlog, I mentioned that it was my plan to work on randomly generated dungeons. And if we look at our goal chart from last week, that was one of my top goals from my exploration game pillar. I have a pretty decent working prototype so let's walk over to where the quote unquote entrance of the dungeon is and check it out. We don't have any art for this yet, but we have some concepts in mind that work really well with the two colliding dimensions theme of our game. And I'm really excited for you to see what we come up with. But if we walk on here, we'll be taken to the first level of a randomly generated dungeon. I forgot to bring in a weapon and some spells, so let's go back out to get some gear and then let's play through a few levels and see how it feels. Alright, I'm really happy with how that works for now. There are a few things that I want to clean up and bugs I've found so far, but as we get more art for different dungeon themes and more monsters added into the game, they'll just keep getting more and more interesting. So now that we're happy with where the dungeons are at, let's take a quick look at how they're generated in the first place. So first we generate some Perlin noise. If you don't know what Perlin noise is, the TLDR is that it's a fancy algorithm that they came up with when making the movie Tron to generate some natural looking textures. I'm not going to go into depth here, but if you want to check it out, like look up the Wikipedia or something. So once we've generated that noise, we push it through a function to normalize it into some values we can use to build our map. Once I have that, I can use those values to generate my background mesh and apply the appropriate textures to each grid square of the map and generate colliders to prevent the player from going where I don't want them to. After that, I can generate the entrance and the exit to the next floor. And for now, to generate the entrance, I start at the center of the map and search outwards until I find a wall to attach the entrance to. And this will only be necessary if the entrance looks like a door or stairs or something. And then after I know where the entrance is, I start there and traverse the map outward, searching for the furthest pathable point from the entrance. In the future, I'll most likely have a more clever mechanic for this, like maybe killing all the monsters or solving a puzzle or something like that, but this will work for now. And then finally, I scatter a random assortment of monsters through the dungeon for the player to fight, and my plans for this step in the future include matching the theme of the monsters to the theme of the dungeon, as well as making group spawns of monsters that will make the player be more strategic about their approach to the fight. Once I have themed dungeons and more interesting things to do in them, I'll be able to generate a virtually unlimited variety of dungeons, with, which I think is super, super cool, but that will definitely be a job for post prototyping phase. So now that I'm pretty much done with the random generation of the dungeons, we can go to our trusty goal tracker and get that hit of dopamine that comes with adding another green check mark to a box and take a look at what we'll be working on during this upcoming week. To keep on adding more features to our exploration pillar, my brother Dason and I are going to be adding a bunch of new chunks to the game to provide some more variety to the overworld map. And then I'll also be working on this last option here on the list. In my opinion, this feature is what makes my game unique, so I'm really excited to work on it and show you what I'll be coming up with. If you want to find out what that surprise feature is, be sure to subscribe so that you'll see when I post the next video. Let me know what you think about the dungeons in the comments down below. Thank you all so much for watching, and I will see you in the next one.